G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. As we continue this pre-draft series I'm doing, where I'm doing little individual videos on prospects in the 2024 AFL Draft. If you wanna see other players I've done in this series, if you click up in the top right corner of this video, you'll find a playlist, bearing in mind that members of this channel do have early access to those videos. Today, I wanna to do Oli Hannaford. This guy is really bolting up the draft rankings, or at least has in the second half of this season. It has emerged to be probably one of my little favorites in this year's draft. It's very hard to place exactly where he's gonna go, but we're talking about a one 180 centimeter utility from Vic Country. And you know, you probably lean towards calling him a small forward as it currently stands, but I suspect that could be a little bit reductive actually on the talent that he has because he only switched to the forward line in the middle of this year and absolutely killed it in the Coats Talent League, which has led to him shooting up the rankings. So we're going to cover off how he tested as well, which is worth some discussion, go through his strengths and weaknesses, and ultimately where we think he might go in this year's draft. So, like I said, he's moved up the draft rankings as rapidly as just about any other prospect throughout the the second half of this year and it came on the back of a finish to the Coates Talent League where he kicked 21 goals from his last nine games and that included a bag of five and six goals as well. He's also fantastic at 450 pressure recording 16 450 tackles in that time. But like I said, calling him a pure small forward might be a little reductive. He actually can play in every line on the field. He started the year in defense as a rebounding small defender. When he moved forward, he quickly showed an ability to hit the big sticks. He kicked five goals in rounds 18 against the Oakley Chargers. He kicked six goals in an enormous qualifying final. He was accurate too, kicking 21 goals, eight, and was in the Cones Talent League team of the year. But his grand final was very impressive as well, albeit in a losing effort. He got moved into the midfield, had 24 disposals, nine tackles, and a goal and one plenty of clearances. So we are seeing a genuinely versatile small player who can play as a rebounding defender, can play play as an inside midfielder and is genuinely a forward threat. When you factor in that he didn't start this year as a small forward and then showed prolific forward 50 craft, I think there's enormous upside with this kid, particularly with his performances in the midfield too. So let's talk about his testing. So he didn't initially get a national draft combine call up. However, they do state level ones as well. So he went to the Victorian equivalent and he recorded the fastest agility time with 7.922 seconds. And that's so obvious when you watch him play, his ability to move laterally is super impressive. He was also equal fourth in the running vertical jump for a pretty small player at 180 centimeters. What was also noteworthy from that combine, however, is that he had a pretty poor 2km time trial. I think it was like seven and a half minutes for a small player that's not particularly strong. In fact, it's a little bit of an alarm bell, but what I would say is it doesn't really seem to correlate with the way he plays his footy. A poor time trial like that would indicate that a player is obviously not a great runner and doesn't have the great aerobic base. But you watch him play and first of all, off the mark, he's pretty good at 2.95 seconds in the 20 meter sprint. Anything under three seconds is pretty elite. Further than that, he's incredibly agile. But when you watch him play as well, it's not as though he can't get from contest to contest and win the footy. He finds plenty of it and also one of the biggest hallmarks of his game is his defensive pressure and his ability to run down opposition players. So that doesn't really make a lot of sense to me why he would record such a poor time trial result but anyway we'll move on and just acknowledge that we can probably put that down as a weakness in his game. However like I said he finds the footy really well. His intensity and defensive pressure is really strong. There's so many different highlights where he is running down opposition midfielders in the middle of the ground and catching them holding the ball and if you if you look on YouTube and watch his grand final performance, you can be forgiven for thinking it's a highlight reel. But in reality, that is just every single possession he got in that particular game. We talked about his versatility. He's definitely a big game player with his big performances in finals. His consistent ability to hit the scoreboard is impressive. He won eight clearances when he moved into the midfield. He's got great burst pace. He's attacking with his ball use and his running. I realize that I am giving a super positive rap on this kid, but I will just put it out there and say he is actually one of my favorite prospects in this draft, and I'm very, very excited about his potential at AFL level. What are the knocks on him? Again, we, we sort of covered it. I mean, you probably start with the height. He's only 180 centimeters and you'd have to say that's a little bit of a limitation, although he's a very, very good agile ground level player. His running capacity, like I said, that poor time trial is definitely something to not be ignored. But I, as I said, I'm a little bit suspicious because it doesn't seem to translate with his on-field performance. Further to that, I would say that a lot of his best performances are in the Coates Talent League and he didn't really perform to that level in the national championships. Now, is that because, you know, he's gotten pretty good at beating up on kids at that particular level, but when he's been asked to stand up, he hasn't risen to the level? Well, I'm not too sure. It's a pretty small sample size. You just factor in. It really was his end of the season that saw him shoot up. So we'll just acknowledge that. It wasn't necessarily in the championships where he dominated. It was the Coates Talent League. That being said, the Coates Talent League is the strongest under 18s junior level that there is in the country. But other than that, I see a very well-rounded prospect who, again, is pretty short, but I mean, he's 10 centimeters taller than Nick Watson, who went at pick five in last year's draft. I'm not going to suggest that he's as good as Nick Watson, but there are some similarities there in terms of the ability to play 
on every level, the ability to win clearances. And he's got some genuine ga game now, so you can back him in to perform well in a big game. That being said, the sample size is smaller. Like when you compare it to other junior talents who perform well for a couple of years now, I don't expect him to shoot into the top 10 or anything like that. But with respect to his draft range, he's ranked 19th by the age, he's ranked 30th by Fox Footy, and he's ranked 28th by Cal Toomey, who describes him as a player in top 25 contention. Now, I personally can see him going a little bit earlier than, say, the top 25. I don't expect him to go in the top 15. But I think there's a number of clubs with late teens picks where I think that the upside of Ollie Hannaford really comes into calculations. Now, there's a couple of teams that could look at him fit on a needs basis. I mean, Fremantle, I think I had Fremantle taking him in the last mock draft that I did on this channel, and there's some degree of a need for a quality small forward like that. They have pick 14, which I think be could become about pick 17 on the night. So that's probably around the start of his range. GWS have a few picks in that range too and they do like their smaller players now would they take someone like an Oli Hannaford just a year after taking Phoenix Goddard so early it seems unlikely that they would draft another style player like that but they might really rate his talent so I would say 15 to 25 is my personal estimate of where I think it's likely for him to go I'd be pretty surprised if he's still on the board more than 25 picks into this year's draft and I'd be shocked to see him taken you know in the first 15 well, that being said I will say I'll put it on the record if West Coast take him and pick what should become 15 on the night, I don't think I would be complaining. I think I would be excited, even though it doesn't really fit a need for us. But anyway, that is my say on Ollie Hannaford, guys. Let me know in the comments what you think. By all means, do your research. Let me know in the comments as well any players you want to see me do next. As a little bit of a spoiler, the next player will be Harvey Langford. But let me know in the comments any other players you want to see. And I'll thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Cheers.